Well, first up on fine print, author and journalist Raham Khan has, base, has bashed the United States for its hypocrisy towards Pakistan while speaking at the Vion Global Summit in Dubai. The London-based journalist blamed the U.S. for being behind all the military operations in Pakistan and then changing its position on terror. Listen in. I also fear um, that Pakistan for a very long time has been blamed for extremism and we've been called all sorts of things like the epicenter of terrorism and we've had this crackdown on militant organizations and we've had a lot of demands being put on us by America to say uh, even going as far as do more, do more, uh, whereas I think people forget that the beginning of all of this militant organizations and all of this uh, jihadi element was planted by the U.S. in Pakistan. So I feel that's quite hypocritical of them to suggest. And while the Minister of Defense for the Maldives, uh, Mara Didi, was at the Vion Global Summit in Dubai as well, she spoke on the importance of democracy and the need for the world to embrace democratic ideals, to have a government that is transparent, non-corrupt and answerable to people. Isn't it? Democracy is hard work. It's not easy. It's very easy for uh, countries and people to say, you know, that authoritarian rule is the best and if you clamp down hard on dissent that uh, you're going to get a success in the economy or things like this. A lot of people do believe in strong rule as well. Uh, but if you want a system that is not correct, uh, corrupt, if you want a system that is answerable to the people, if you want a, a system uh, that is transparent, good governance, uh, then you need democracy. And while taking the example of Brexit, the Minister Mara Didi also highlighted the importance of youth participation in politics. She hailed Malala Yousafzai and Greta Thunberg for the work they are doing in education and climate change. She invited the youth to participate more and said that uh, ageism should not be a problem in politics. I think it's important to have the youth involved. You see now uh, Greta Thunberg, who is uh, making her voice heard in the uh, climate change issue. We see Malala, who is talking about uh, her hardships and how she wanted uh, younger women to be involved in education. You see a younger part participation and encouragement also on the part of the world community to get younger people involved in politics. But uh, you see when they don't uh, participate the detriment that a country goes to. For instance, I saw on the media and uh, everywhere uh, when there was Brexit, the older generation voted for Brexit. The younger people wanted them to stay with the EU. But uh, the youth took it for granted that uh, they wouldn't vote Brexit. So their non-participation made the older generation decide for the younger generation in Britain. So uh, if I think there are many issues that are involved worldwide which if the youth thought about it that they they should realize that it's their future and unless they participate then there is not going to be uh, a world that is ideal for them to live in because uh, uh, we we move on generations move on if the youth participation is not there then it's difficult but with social media, you find that we have a very savvy social media, uh, educated young uh, people around. They are always on their texts rather than talking. They'd rather talk through texts. Uh, you, you see them on Twitter. You see them on Instagram. You see them on Facebook. Uh, but more and more, I feel youth are disillusioned with politics. So... I don't like the thought of um, ageism in politics. 
Well, the former ambassador to the United Nations, David Stewart, defended democracy to be the best of all political systems. He said it was only a political system that was in the hands of people, and hence education and better responsibility among citizens is what is required for democracy to flourish. Is democracy overrated? Uh, some have said that we do not have the imagination to think of a political system that is other than democracy and we tend to sell democracy and liberal values as not just the best option but the only option for countries. But this is not 1930 and tanks will not be out in the streets if we do not have a democratic system. Well, well as uh, Winston Churchill said, mm -hmm. democracy is the worst system of all political systems except for all the others. And that, I think, is true. Uh, people who, who live in countries that are not democratic will understand the importance of democracy. But in a democracy, power by definition is in the hands of the people. And the quality of the democracy will depend very much on the degree of education, the degree of responsibility and commitment that the people have to the success of the democracy. And the sad truth is that electorates can be just as corrupt as any other holder of power. And too often these days, in the West, I think, we have elections which are auctions by parties offering the people more and more for less and less. And the only way that governments can meet those, province, those promises is to borrow money. And I think this is at the root of a lot of the problems we have in Western democracies now. We need more responsible, better educated uh, voters to make sure that democracy succeeds. And while speaking at the edition, this edition of Yon's uh, Global Summit in Dubai was Latvia's president, Dr. Vera Friedberger. And Dr. Vera uh, raised an important issue, a need for digital literacy today. Speaking about issues surrounding growing fake news and propaganda-driven content, the president said that modern technology has been fueling age-old lies, vicious slanders and propaganda. In order to tackle this technological challenge, he called for the need to be sensitive uh, sensitize people and initiate digital literacy. Technology, like any other tool, uh, can be used for a variety of purposes. Uh, it can be a tremendous support to democratic processes uh, by allowing more people uh, to be uh, informed about the alternatives that Party, the party system in democracies offers to, for instance, in, in elections. Um, but uh, the most modern technologies have also increased the possibility for fake news and fabricated news. Here again, it is not a new invention. Uh, propaganda, uh, lies, um, uh, inventions, uh, vicious slander, are as old as the world. But nowadays, uh, modern technologies give them greater scope and the ability to reach more people. It has become acknowledged that in the future, not just literacy and digital literacy will be necessary for the maintenance of democracies, but real training since childhood to actually distinguish what is likely to be true news, uh, what corresponds to reality, uh, uh, or what has been totally fabricated. Remembering at the same time that any event that you look at uh, can be looked at from different angles. Uh, at the time when Egypt was having the so-called Arab Spring, I remember um, uh, a representative of Al Jazeera uh, saying that when they went with their cameras on Tahrir Square, uh, they had to choose where to direct the cameras. It was a very large crowd, a very large square. And depending on where you focus the cameras, you do get a slight nuance in how you represent the facts.